All right, guys, next up, we got the Falcon Switch or the VSL. I've been using this hopper for a month or two. I've been using it on and off uh, with the uh, GI Sports level, depending on which hopper is working or clean at the moment. So, yeah, let's dive right into it. First, I'll give you like a little overview of the hopper. If you want a more in-depth one, I suggest the Paintball Ruin My Life one. That's I watched that one. It was pretty uh, good. It was pretty in-depth on like what you get brand new out of the box, but I just wanted to give you more of my personal experiences with it after using it for tournaments uh, and practices for a couple months. So it comes with a lid and a speed feed. I always like that. I like that new trend where they're giving us both. Just saves you money because before you'd have to spend an extra 30, 50 bucks on a speed feed. So it's nice to not have to do that. It also comes with a bunch of little conversion things. It's got like a 250 upgrade kit where normally you'd have to buy a shell. There's a 50 cal conversion kit kit which is why they call it the Vulcan Switch, right? So it can switch between 68 cal and 50 cal. Like the LBL, it's only got one button on the back, right? There's no anti-jam, there's nothing you can do. You just turn it on and off. If you turn it on and off, it'll make an initial pulse. So I guess you can hop or something, you could just keep turning on and off to get that one pulse to try and get to anti-jam, but there's no real uh, anti-jam that you can use. And uh, finally, I'll show you how to take it apart. So you just like, it's kind of like basic standard stuff. You pop the lid open, pull up a tab, you press a button. Uh, the rotor did it first, and a lot of hoppers have done it since. It's just kind of the standard way a uh, paintball hopper comes apart. Two halves, button, latch, all that stuff. It's very simple to figure out. You might have already noticed, but the speed feed's broken. This finger's missing. It broke on the second time using it, just tore right out. So, <laughs> obviously that's not good if your uh, speed feed breaks immediately. Maybe I just got a faulty one from the factory. I don't know, but that is bad. Also, it's kind of hard to tell, but all these fingers are inset. Uh, if you, like, here, I'll compare it. The level is sitting flat. The Vulcan ones are dipping in. Similar to the original, like, Virtue speed feeds, those gray ones had the little... Puffy cone for the halo, people who glue them on the rotors. That's what it reminds me of, because they're all dipping in, and they don't hold paintball that way. paintballs that well. I mean, it's fine. You will lose a little bit of paint. It's just annoying that you're always dropping paint on the ground, especially when I fill my tank. My hopper will be tilted like this, and paintballs will roll out. Obviously, it's not helped by the fact that one of the fingers broke off, but I still think it would have sucked even if the finger didn't break off. So this hopper is a little annoying to take apart. Well, I did say it comes apart standard like the other ones. I just find this button a little hard to press. It kind of hurts my finger sometimes. I got to press it a little bit weird to get it apart. Also, a weird way it comes apart is you see this cone. It, like, hooks onto the bottom instead of being two clean halves, which would be fine, except for paint gets in there, and there's all these stupid little cracks and bumps and lines in the way, and it makes it really hard to clean. Staying on that topic, looking inside, there's lots of hard ledges inside the hopper, like where screws will come in, where the two halves go together. And I mean like sharp edges, like you can cut your finger on these things. And it just seems like a bad idea to have paintballs go into, like, rattling around in here. There's so many things it can break on, like, especially where the speed feed attaches right here. There's two hard corners, and I feel like they're, like, made to break paintballs. Keeping with that theme, this ramp... This doesn't make any sense. Why wouldn't they just make it solid? Because now that it's got all these grills, when you break paint inside it, you have to clean every individual grill. You gotta get a microfiber and freaking rub it all. It just it's pain in the ass. Why wouldn't they just make that solid? Like they made this one solid. Also, this is like a half-assed ramp. Maybe it's for the 50 cal, but it's like a very gradual ramp, and then it looks like it's trying to ease the paint into here. But I'm not sure how practical that is because when I get low on paint on this thing, I do find myself rattling around a lot. Uh, continuing taking it apart, comes off like the LVO, nothing holding it in, it just flies right out. And, similar to the LVL, it's got soft, cheap plastic. Uh, another bad thing with this hopper is it has a lot of pressure on the ball stack. I don't know, maybe that's adjustable, but right now, if it's harder on paint than most hoppers. Uh, my friend has a gun that he made himself, and he was using, uh, he's trying out a different kind of detail, right? And on his TFX, it worked great, but with the Vulcan switch, um, it kept double feeding and triple feeding and feeding past these detents. So while these detents weren't a, per weren't a perfect fit, it showed that 
there's more pressure on the ball stack with a Vulcan switch than a TFX because the switch was feeding past a detents while the TFX was fine. So that leads me to assume that if you're shooting more fragile paint, it's more likely that you would break it in the Vulcan switch than the TFX. Also doubling that with the fact that it's easier, easier to break paint inside of the shell since there's hard edges. It's just, I've broken a lot of paint in this hopper. And I know I'm not the best at that, so that has something to do with it. But if I do a slide with this hopper, or do a slide with my TFX, it's more likely that I'd break in this hopper. I've had a lot more breaks in this hopper. So that's frustrating. Also, um, I have clips of it where... Another thing is it's kind of hard to reassemble. It's kind of annoying to tell if it's work like it's hard to tell if the pieces are in place properly because even if they aren't in place properly, they'll work sometimes. So I took apart the hopper and put it back together, thinking I'd done it right. I put it on, it turned on, it spun, it fed. I was like, okay, cool, it works. And I took it out to the field, and the tray actually wasn't in properly, so it was kept slipping off the gears. Being sometimes and turn on and off. And that's a frustrating thing because if I'm needing to clean my hopper quickly and then turn around in a point in a tournament, I don't know if the hopper is together properly. And I don't know with this hopper if it's going to work or not. And I know if I do a bad dive, which I especially do in tournaments when I'm just going like, just flinging my body down there, uh, I might break paint inside my hopper, which I actually did a couple times uh, at this last uh, Ninja Ball. That being said, there's still good things about the hopper. It's cheap. It's right in that mid-tier, right beside the LVL. It's not the most expensive. It's not the cheapest. Um, that being said, when it came out, it was the cheapest. Like, when the LVL and the Switch came out, they were the cheap hops. They were the cheap options. It wasn't the, like, Rotor LTR and the Spire IR. Those weren't around yet. Those came out after. So I assume that these sale prices that you see now for the LVL and the Switch are driver, like, are so that it could compete with the IR and the LTR. So maybe in future editions, they're all going to be at that lowest price point. It comes with a bunch of stuff. That's another good thing is it comes with a bunch of stuff. It got like a 250 round uh, shell. It's got a conversion kit for 50 cal and 68 cal. It's speed feed comes with a lid, so it comes with a lot of stuff, which is cool. So you don't have to spend that extra money getting the expansion, like getting the 250 shell, getting the speed feed, getting the 50 cal conversion. If anyone in the world uses a 150 dollar hopper on 50 cal, I mean that's more for splat masters and like renters. Uh, this hop is pretty good on batteries. I haven't changed it. My friend, like, it lasts a long time. I've changed the batteries twice in the LBL, and I've been using this one just as much, and I haven't switched at all. So maybe the LBL just sucks on batteries, but this one's good just, just like any other hopper. This one, I'd say, get it for cheap. I think this hopper makes an ideal backup hopper, since it's, no one wants to have a $300 Spire sitting in their gear bag as a backup, unless you're balling like that. I'd much rather have a $100 Valken Hopper sitting in my gear bag as my backup. So I think it makes a really good backup. Uh, it does have those drawbacks, but I don't think it's a deal breaker since the hopper does work most of the time. And since it's a backup, I don't think you'd have to worry about cleaning it and making it work because you could just throw it in the bag and switch to the other one. I right, guess that's it for this one. Uh, next up, we're going to have the Spire 3, hopefully. Uh, maybe if I can get my hands on R2, we'll do that. Uh, and then finally, we'll do a view review of all the hoppers in this press range and I'll rank them. We'll see where everything lies.